And now let's check in with infectious disease specialist and ABC News contributor, Dr. Todd Ellerin. Dr. Todd, uh, this morning, I want to get to the vaccine, but first I want to start with this new virus strain in the UK because it's one of those things that has so many people so worried. Experts are saying that it is more contagious, but not more deadly. But as we heard from James, there is some skepticism that the UK government used this as an excuse to strengthen Christmas restrictions that should never have been relaxed. So separate fact from fiction for us here. What do we know about this strain so far and how worried should we be? Good morning, Diane. You know, remember, this is a new strain we're hearing about. We're hearing that it spreads more efficiently, which is a problem, but may not be more deadly. But remember, if we ha if it spreads more and we have more cases, then likely hospitalizations and deaths will follow that. Now, sometimes viruses that that mutate and spread more efficiently actually cause less death. So I think we really have to see how this plays out. This virus has to be watched very closely. All right, and now let's talk vaccines. We just saw Dr. Jen getting her vaccine. I know you got yours on Friday. So first of all, how are you feeling? I feel great. I mean, this is, you know, almost no pain with the injection, one out of, pain, one out of 10 uh, pain uh, later in the day and then the following day, two out of 10 soreness, and then 48 hours later, zero, and no other symptoms. It was, it was really easy. All right, well, that's, that's very good to hear on all fronts. And how important do you think it is for medical leaders like you, like Dr. Jen, to share your experiences with the vaccine? Well, I have to say there's no one better than Dr. Ashton to inoculate us with hope. Um, this is really the type of messenger, and she's the type of message that we want to deliver to the public and around the world. Remember what I said on Friday. We have to demonstrate trustworthiness before we can expect trust from the people that we want to want to vaccinate. And um, I think actions speak louder than words, and that's what we saw. But, Diane, I do want to take less than a minute and just, I know you're a sucker for Dr. Seuss poems. <laughs> and I want to read something to you and dedicate it, dedicate it to the people around the world who are waiting for the COVID-19 vaccine. It's called The Waiting Room. All right. A virus named COVID is circling the globe. My teacher tells me it spreads more when it's cold. Most people don't get it, but some people do. I've seen it in person. It's worse than the flu. I thought it was random, but that isn't true. A mask in some distance will protect you. I'm told there's no cure for COVID-19, but kindness and caring are therapeutic, I've seen. A vaccine's been developed by brilliant minds. It's safe and effective for protecting all kind. It's on the horizon, but not really here. Patience and waiting is necessary, I fear. Where's my shot will be a major question of next year. The pandemic is raging, but do not give up hope. You have all that it takes to keep climbing the slope. Along the way, you'll be tested. I'm sure this is true. The most challenging games are when played against you. Kid, you'll move mountains. You will indeed. Your vaccine is coming, 99% guaranteed. He is a doctor, he is an infectious disease specialist, he is a television commentator, and now, ladies and gentlemen, the he is also is a poet. The vaccine is coming. That's awesome. Now, I have more questions for you, but now I kind of wish I didn't, because I kind of want to end on, on that note. But I love that. That's a really hopeful message, no. and I feel like you got all the information there into one, one slot. Um, it's Dr. Seuss, you know? So, uh, Dr. Eller, I do want to ask you about the next phase of all this, because the CDC says people over 74 and frontline workers like grocery store workers, teachers, emergency responders, they should be next in line. Uh, do you agree with that recommendation? And if so, when do you think those people will start getting it? I really do, Diane. When you look at the triangle, I think they've hit the three key points, science, compassion, and equity. And that's what I'm seeing. Remember, in the first iteration, the essential workers were 1B and the chronic conditions and elderly were 1C. What they've done is they've tried to meld the most vulnerable groups and keep it equitable. So I really think that that's important. When will they get it? When will 1B start? You know, that remains to be seen. We're, we're hearing we're about a week behind. Remember, there are a lot of hurdles to getting this vaccine to everyone. But now we know it will be sooner than later with those groups. And we know you and so many others predict did a surge uh, after Thanksgiving. How did that pan out when you look at where the numbers are there? And what does that do for how you're uh, looking at Christmas? 
Right. Well, it's exactly what we've seen, right? We've seen, uh, you know, historic numbers of deaths in a day, over 3,600. We're averaging over 2,500 deaths in a day. The, the number of cases are, you know, 250,000 a day. We're, we're at an unacceptable point, that level. We, we, we have to drive this down. And it gets back to what you said in the UK with this, with this mutant virus. The more that we have uncontrolled virus around the globe, the more likely this could mutate into something that is more efficient and, and can spread more. We have to really stamp it down. When we get it to low levels, then it's less likely to change to something that, that you know, we won't be able to prevent. And, and right finally, now, we think the vaccine will still work. And I just want to squeeze in, I'm glad you added that last point because it is a very important one, um, but I wanted to squeeze in one viewer question and that's a viewer asking, if, if my relative gets vaccinated, can they come visit me? So I think, remember, they need not just one dose. One dose gives some protection, but it, you really need that two doses to really get that full protection. So it, uh, it, it depends on are they a vulnerable group, you know, and they still have to wear masks. Remember, immunization is not a license to take off your mask. Really, I think one of the major principles that I want to imbue before the pr Christmas holiday is that travel, we have to limit mobility as much as possible. I don't want to be like the Scrooge, but it's really important that we handle this in a way that drives down the virus. All right, Dr. Todd Ellerin, always great to have you, and thank you for your poem today. Thanks, Diane. We'll now be expecting one every day. <laughs> I'm not that good. <laughs> All right, thanks, Dr. E. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.